The title of my message this morning is Living in Regret. The shoulda, coulda, woulda blues. Shoulda, coulda, woulda blues. And as I was researching that and looking into regret, because a lot of us, usually it's around the time of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, that we think back and we start thinking about what we could have done, should have done, would have done, amen? And instead, most of us, by human nature, instead of learning from that, what we've gone through, we get stuck in this place, this life of regret. And let me give you a few statistics that go along with that. It says research shows that approximately 90% of people, including church people, report having or living a life of regret. Most of the time, regret is a product of creative thinking and excessive guilt rather than godly remorse. The capacity of counterfactual thinking forms the basis for the experience of regret and involves a comparison process between what presently is and what could have been. In order to experience regret, people must be able to imagine, there's that word again, imagination, imagine alternative realities. Anybody ever been somewhere but you weren't there because your mind was somewhere else? Yeah. Somebody said, that's me right now. <laughs> Amen. That do not currently exist to make comparisons between these alternative possibilities and their present life scenario. And to evaluate the outcome of their actual choices and decisions against other outcomes that could have been. Yes. Come on, look at somebody. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. If you're living in the past. You'll come out today. In this process, people begin to wish they could have made different choices, different decisions, or pursued different courses of action that could have produced different circumstances when they still had the chance. So it's a, there's a fine line in between uh, regret and remorse, or even repentance, and we'll go into that a little later on. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. But a lot of us, the Holy Spirit showed me so many times we, uh, like the bishop gave the scenario on Friday about our mind, we have different things that attach itself to our mind. And yes. We have God, God delivers us from those things, and then we're free of those, we have freedom in Christ, but then all of a sudden we find ourselves right back in the same place. Yes. Kind of like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down. Today I'm free, tomorrow I'm captive. Today I'm free, tomorrow I'm captive. So I said, God, what causes us to go back and forth and back and forth? If you have freed us, if you have saved us, if you have delivered us, then what is it that causes us to keep going backwards? And we take two steps forward and 15 back and three forward and 34 backwards. What is it? And the host said, regret. God frees us from that. We come to the altar. We cry. We say we give it to the Lord. And then we go home to our present circumstances. And we feel like God is still Amen. punishing us. Amen. Amen. We pray and we ask God to bring me out of poverty. We believe it. We receive it. We roll on the ground. We cry. We spit. Then we go home to our broke car and our roach-infested house. And we have regrets. So then when we see that and, we, and, 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 and our eyes fool us, and then all of a sudden what we once had and believed is now gone. So, in short, regret arises when people begin to contemplate how things could have been different and better if only I hadn't married him. <laughs> or if only I hadn't married her. If only I had made a different career choice. If only I had not asked him or her out. If only I had reconciled with my parent before he or she passed away. If only I had applied for the job that I was too scared to try to get. If only I had studied harder for the exam. If only I would have graduated yeah, yeah. high school. If only I wouldn't have had sex as a teenager. If only I wouldn't have used my credit cards and ruined my credit. If only. If only I would have listened to my mama. If only I would have did this. If only. And so we live in that day in, day out. God said, here's freedom over here. We live in that back and forth, if only. We can't even have concentrated our job because we're in the if only. Yes. Constantly daydreaming 
about what could have been yes. and what should have been. And only if I have made this choice or that choice or I settled for this or settled for that, but God's going to free us today. Amen. Regret is associated with a variety of emotions such as anger, irritability, embarrassment, helplessness, desperation, and sorrow. You ever been in a place where you, and I've been there, you've been in a place, bless our children, because sometimes they get the brunt of everything. <laughs> Good days, bad days in between. And you ever been in a place where you know, no one has done anything to you, but you're just snappy. Or my mom says, snappy cat. Just snappy. Somebody says, Good morning. You ah. A lot of times that's regret. You ever find yourself in a place where you can't give somebody else a compliment? Every time Sister January gets a new pair of shoes, it, your stomach is boiling. Every time somebody drives up in a different car, or a, you thought you should have had, but they had it, your stomach is boiling. Anytime, and that's not what you ate last night. That, that's <laughs> jealousy. <laughs> Woo! So Amen? Uh, regret breeds jealousy. Yes, it does. It breeds envy. Yes, it does. Amen? And it keeps us frozen in one place. I shouldn't have got that turn because I'm going to be half all right now. And then my mom should have that, and then I got to win it. That, that. It is what it is. Thank you. It is what it is, what it is, what it is. The size of your thighs, the way your waistline looks, the way your feet are, your nose. Come on, listen to what I say. It is what it is. It is what it is. So there's no reason to sit and regret and regret and regret and regret and regret all the time. I knew I shouldn't have messed up with Johnny because he was no good. And that, well, you liked him when you were there. Amen. <laughs> and so now own up to it, amen? And come on, listen to my say, move on. Move on. Hallelujah. God is praying somebody right now. Hallelujah. So people can have regrets about things they have done, which is commission, or left undone of omission in the recent past or the distant future. Given the commonplace of regret among people, many may be misled into underestimating the true extent of the negative consequences it has on the quality of our life. Constantly living in regret. Constantly. And you know where a lot of it comes? At our class reunions. We have class reunions. <laughs> Somebody said, ooh. We have class reunions and we go and we fix ourselves up to appear a certain way, amen, so other people can be impressed, so they can know that we made it in the world, that we're successful, or we go to see if, 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 if Sister Susie, who had a 32 waist, still got a 32 waist. And so all this stuff is filled that we can't even uh, live in the freedom of God because we're so bogged down in what used to be. How it used to be. I should have been in the professional. I should have played in NFL. I should have played in the NBA. If it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for that. God showed me some of us are still sitting on the bench. Oh. And on in the top socks. <laughs> and the shorts say, put me in, coach, put me in. I'm ready. Put me in. God said it's over. <laughs> that opportunity is gone. And it's over. And what we do is we neglect situations and opportunities to mentor another young man and raise him up because we're still stuck in the what could have been, should have been, how it could have been. Instead of using that situation and say, God, let me mentor somebody. The mistakes that I made that maybe kept me from graduating college or kept me from doing this, I'm going to help somebody else. We're so infuriated into sports and into all kinds of things, trying to live vicariously through our children. Our poor children, dance, dance, do sports, do this, do this. And we know they don't want to do it. And we just live vicariously through them. Oh, you gonna dance. And you gonna play sports. And you gonna draw and you gonna paint. Because that's all of what you wanted to do. And you didn't get a chance to do it. And so now your, your poor children, you're pressing it upon them. Come on, say freedom. Freedom. 